Hi everybody and welcome to Tuesday in France in a very very cold afternoon here in the city of San Sebastian. This time we have come all the way to San Sebastian Donosti in the Basque coast. We have already done the city. We have been right there. So let me turn the camera around. So let me show you where we are. So this is the city of San Sebastian, one of the most beautiful cities in the whole Basque country. This is the Cantabric Sea, part of the Atlantic Ocean. All the way back there we have the beautiful city of San Sebastian. As you can see in the mountains, there's a little bit of snow, so we've had a couple of days of snow all the way out here. So really a very beautiful cold day. But today what I want to show you, it's the end of the city or the entrance, depending on what you're talking to. We want to go to see the wind comb, the comb of the wind. A uh, beautiful, beautiful art piece uh, done or designed by Eduardo Chiquida, a local artist. Okay, but as we get there, it's right here in front of us. I just want to point you out that in front of us, what we have it is uh, Monte Urgul, okay, with the Sacred Heart of Jesus all the way on top. Let's see if you can get to see it far, far, far up there. That's the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Okay, and as I told you, this, uh, what I want to show you today, it is called the wind comb, or the comb of the wind. What on earth is this? Well, the thing is that uh, according to the Basque mythology, in the Basque culture, as this is a pre-Christian culture, we have a lot of mythological creatures. And here in the city of San Sebastián, fishing has always been the most important economical movement or economical reason for the city of San Sebastián. And back then, as you can imagine, all the sailors, they depended on the wind. The wind was very, very important. And here, it's very, very strong, okay? Winds come very strong in and out, so they really needed to be very careful. So, a local artist uh, named Eduardo Chillida he was born in 1924, he died in 20, 2002. He was commissioned to do a sculpture in this area. And what he decided to do is pay tribute to the wind. That wind that comes in the city, and if it's calm, if it's a good wind, will take our sailors, our family out, and bring them back home. Okay, so that's what this sculpture is all about. So let me turn it around. So, Really, the sculpture starts down here. I mean, all of this area, this is the western part of the city of San Sebastián. And uh, Eduardo Chillida, he used to say that he, he was, when he was a kid, he loved to come over here to this side of the town to play. It was his place. So he wanted to, pay, to put here this tribute to the wind. All of this area was uh, prepared in 1977 to welcome these three beautiful Kortenstein sculptures. Uh, but the sculpture is not just that, because he didn't, us, he didn't want us, Eduardo Chillida, just to see you know, the three sculptures. He wants us to feel the wind, to see the air, the water. So all of this promenade, it was really uh, attributed to the wind. So here, what we have are seven holes. Let's see if uh, you can hear on the other side. Okay, you could hear the wind. That's what the artist wants. Wants us to feel the wind, to smell the wind. I mean, I know you cannot smell it, but this salt, ah, beautiful. This salty air, it's really, really incredible. So anyway, that's part of the sculpture. The most photographic or the most spectacular things uh, are these three Corten steel sculptures. Uh, Eduardo Chillida, he did, in fact, this, uh, okay, I don't want to get wet, so waves, if you don't mind, please stay behind. Uh, Eduardo Chillida, he did many of these sculptures. In fact, he did 23. The three that we have here, uh, they're known as the Comwin number 15, okay? They are number 14, 15, and 16. Uh, he, did, he started doing this collection of Tribute to the Wind in the 1950s. 
the 1970s is when he did these ones and these three they were placed in here in 1977. Uh, each one of them, they are the three largest ones that take part of this collection, uh, each one of them weighs over 10 tons. Okay, so really they are huge. Let me get a little closer. As you can see, they're placed, especially these two, this one, okay, well, here, one thing is that I don't want to get too close because, hey, there's no handrail, so I don't want to fall. Uh, <laughs> so this one, uh, it is in the middle of the water. So what they had to do for the construction of this one, it was, well, the sculptures that were constructed, or they were built outside of here, they were brought, and they had to do an uh, iron promenade all the way to this first rock, where some stone masons had to carve all of these things, all of these holes, to place this incredible 10-ton uh, sculpture in there. Then we have these other two, okay? Uh, this one, the one that is farther away, it's a stand-in, it's beautiful. So imagine that they had to do this incredible uh, promenade all the way to go. There were rails in uh, the 1970s. It was not like now. They, now we have more technical skills to do such a thing. By then people thought, okay, should we do it from boats into the ocean? Should we do it uh, down the hill? Should we do it with helicopters? Well, at the end, the solution was to construct a ramp all the way from here, from where I'm standing, all the way over there. Right? So really, it was uh, amazing engineer work of art. We always say that this piece is by Eduardo Chigida. He was, whoops, sorry for that. He was the artist who designed all this, but obviously there had to be some engineer work and some architects. The engineer was Jose Maria Elosegui, a very, very famous, uh, how do you say, uh, engineer, technical engineer from here. As you can see, they're made of cotton steel and this rotten, this iron, uh, it's melting, it's beautiful. But it is the, the patina that it gets, it is natural, okay? I want to get very, very close so you get to see that really it's embedded inside of, this, of the rock. I mean, they had to cut some holes in the rock to place them in here. Here, as you can see, the wind is very strong. And it's quite a very, very powerful ocean. The salt, the waves, the whole thing, it's very, very complicated. So they couldn't just place them and that's it. No, 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 they had to do a very, very good work of placing them and securing them. And that's the incredible work that we have here. Okay? So really, it's an amazing three pieces of art in here. I love this corner of San Sebastian. If you ever get to come over here, please do come all the way to the end of San Sebastian, or as somebody says, this is the beginning of San Sebastian because really the wind comes from here. So who knows if it's the beginning or the end, but to tell you the truth, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous place. There's another thing that to me, it's also very beautiful and it has nothing to do with uh, man-made things. This is nature made art, which is this wall that we have here. As you can see, all of these vertical lines are quite peculiar. A lot of people ask us, what on earth is this? Okay, first, let me show you one of the pieces that I love. I mean, this has been made by Mother Nature, okay? But take a look at that. I mean, this is so beautiful. So soft and rough at the same time. It's just gorgeous. So many times we're asking how or what happened here? How did it, how did these things happen? Well, uh, let me settle the telephone over here. Okay, hopefully it doesn't, we don't get wet today here. So what happened? Whoop, nope, the other way, here we go. So, okay, let's go millions and millions of years ago, okay? When we have the European tectonic plate and the African plate, they were moving, they crashed, and they made the Pyrenees, okay? So Spain, it is in the African tectonic plate. What happened is that sometimes, instead of just pushing each other and making mountains, what they did is they snapped and they became vertical. 
So here what we have is those snapped parts and uh, you get to see all the different layers of the stratus that was left in history. Okay? So, so a lot of people come over here to study these type of walls a little bit more farther to the west of Spain, here also in the Basque Country. Uh, we have a huge wall all and this is uh, they say there that is the book of the world because you see all the different time periods. You can see where well, there was volcanic explosions, you could see the whole thing, one line is darker, the other one is very very light. So that's what happened in here. Let me show you again. Oops. Turn around. Okay, so imagine that each one of these lines, each one of these layers, it is a piece of history, so part of the world's history. So really, it's beautiful. And here, as it is so exposed to the ocean, uh, we get to be eroded and it gets all of these beautiful, beautiful colors and different textures and everything. So I love this part of town. And with this, my friends, it's pretty much all I wanted to share with you today. The Wind Come by Eduardo Chiguida, which is this beautiful tribute to the wind. And let's see if we welcome one more wind here so we can listen to it. And I will say goodbye. Let's see. No wind. Yes, wind. Okay, my friends, it's been a great pleasure. I shall see you this Sunday. Uh, with an hour, we're gonna be cooking. So, see you on Sunday. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Be good. Have fun. And learn something. Hopefully, you have learned something today. By the way, if you have not subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, do it. That way, you will find out everything we're doing. And also, down here in the feed, uh, you have information. Come on, we have heard that. Uh, you have information about. Uh, if you want to subscribe to our newsletter, okay? That way you will get emails from me to let you know posts I'm writing, the articles I'm posting, the podcast, the video, the whole thing. So remember to subscribe to our uh, newsletter and our YouTube channel. And also remember, please, to share. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye, amigos. Oh, oh, what am I doing?